The official NHL 24 reveal trailer just went live, and today we're giving you a full breakdown. This trailer is over five minutes long, so there's going to be a lot to unpack today. I also had the chance to play NHL 24 out in Vancouver last week, so as we see things in the trailer, I'll talk about my experiences firsthand. Let's go. From non-stop pressure and physicality to dynamic new ways to attack, EA Sports NHL 24 brings it and so much more. I'm not going to lie, this is already more, more gameplay than we got in last year, year's reveal trailer. So we're off to a good start. Features to up the intensity, authenticity, Ooh, into and the connectivity bench. of the game. Crossplay is here. Now, you can finally compete right with or against rip, your friends we're getting on into cross generation play. consoles. This vastly improves matchmaking quality and shortens wait times. So you and your crew can make the most of your time on the ice. There you have it. It is now official. Full crossplay is coming to NHL 24 in both Hut and World of Chell. It's not the half and half crossplay we had in 23. Now you can actually mix and match players of different consoles on one ESHL team. This is huge for the competitive scene in esports, but definitely was expected. I'm glad that they got it done. Right game changer. The exhaust engine. Next up is the exhaust the engine. Of heading an opponent in the zone, forcing nice you to make strategic exhaust. decisions like choosing to establish puck possession or attack on the rush. Exhaust engine is made up of the sustained pressure system oh, and the goalie oh, fatigue that system. Tape? Holy. The sustained pressure system rewards extended offensive events such as shooting, passing, and checking in the attacking zone. As you can see with the pressure gauge, so there's that actual the graphic team there. Will gain a boost in stats due to the adrenaline in the middle of effect, the ice. while the defensive team gets all. a decrease in stats due to the pinned effect. This change makes real hockey plays effective. There's our first look at the exhaust engine, and I would say that this is the feature that most differentiates this game from any NHL game we've had in the past. As you control the puck in the offensive zone, a pressure meter is going to pop up and appear right in the middle of the ice. This is meant to simulate those momentum swings in real hockey where a team is pinned in their own zone and just cannot get the puck out. There's a few different ways to fill that bar, so as you control the puck in the offensive zone, the bar is going to slowly tick forward. However, the quickest way to fill this is to actually do things in the offensive zone. So the more shots you take, if you make hits in the offensive zone or complete a series of passes, that is going to boost your bar up quicker. Once the offensive pressure bar is all the way filled, you're going to get a boost to your stats and your opponent's going to decrease stats. They'll tire out and lose energy. You'll be buzzing around the offensive zone and a lot of goals will happen because of this. In terms of how this actually affects gameplay, I found it better to take some more unique shots that I wouldn't have taken, say, last year. Taking more shots and filling the bar quicker felt like it was more of an advantage than waiting out that perfect moment, that perfect cross crease. And a lot more different style goals were going into the back of the net because of the goalie fatigue system which you'll see here soon the dump and chase can be used to wear down the opponent and retrieve the puck so then that jump and chase where you can like get a booming hit to, to send that bar up as well out, dude these saves are crazy holy and i mean they finally the buried one there but pressure opens up new opportunities to attack the net on the defensive side you now have to choose between making the safe boards and outplay mm, there's or a little chip off the boards the puck over in the slot so in that section, we saw how crazy things can get when the bar is full. Obviously, the offensive players are buzzing around. The goalies are diving everywhere. You'll see a lot of rebounds and different opportunities. I don't know if it was specifically mentioned, but in order to get rid of that pinned effect on defense, all you have to do is get the puck out of the zone. Easier said than done. We've also added the goalie fatigue feature. Uh, let's get feature, into these crazy animations. Over 50 new goalie animations, including a brand There's new all desperation the save package. Dude. Goalies will now tire as you increase attack zone time. Move Some the of these saves, like most importantly, I mean, saves like this happen net. in real hockey, As but these tires, just look crazy. Errors, causing I didn't even see all these chaos in the crease. So there we get to see some of the craziness of the new goalie animations. And as a goalie gets more fatigue, so more shots against, more pin time there in their zone, that's when you're going to see those saves really come out. The goalie tires out, slows down, and is just a little bit slower on that post-to-post, -post, leading to more goal scoring opportunities. I will say I couldn't score as much as I'd like with the fatigue. Where you really start to see the goals go in is the rebound. So a shot will be taken, and the goalie will have like a desperation, almost fall back, where you end up like on his back or weird positions and you get to bury a free rebound goal to be honest in real hockey you really don't see goalies just like sprawling out and about on routine saves like we did in this trailer but for a video game i think it makes a bit more sense it's almost like you're playing a game within a game with the offensive pressure with the goalie fatigue these are all things to keep in mind as you play 
take the body. There's a cover the boy. Oh yeah, now we're talking hit contact feature revolutionizes checking in NHL 24. Dude. Bringing more physicality <laughs> to game though. And ramping up the fun and authenticity of defensive plays. Oh my, sit now, down. If you land a big check, your opponent will re-enter the play slower, creating more turnovers and counterattack opportunities. But if you don't connect, You'll be left out know, of position. This, late little bump? this really increases the risk reward factor Ew. and makes gameplay incredibly Ew. exciting. Nice goal. Landing a clean, solid check on the opponent will result in new physics based and animation based reactions, creating tons of new wow moments in every game. A quick push on the right stick will allow you yeah, to shut the opponent, bump. creating uh, quick puck separation bump. with lower penalty risk. Plus, we've also introduced a new gameplay meta that adds a dedicated reverse body check control. This allows mm. the puck carrier to protect the puck with their body to impactful effect. And to make all of that even sweeter, you can now send players into the bench. It's about time we get him into the bench, huh? And some broken glass too, okay. So hitting has been reworked in NHL 24. and 23, you were kind of just flicking the stick hoping for different results. So at some points you wanted a light bump, at some points you wanted that booming hit. In 24, that's gonna be more under your actual control. So if you wanna go for a light bump, you just flick on the analog stick. If you wanna actually wind up a hit, you're gonna pull back on the stick and then explode forward, resulting in some of those bigger hits that we see here. This was actually a bit difficult to figure out when I had the control in my hand. It just felt kind of awkward at times, but as I started to play with it more, you really do start to feel and understand the system. And I will say it definitely feels more rewarding when you wind up that big hit and actually hit someone, but it is definitely more difficult too. If they make a quick move, if they make a quick deke, you're just going to miss them entirely. The new energy system plays a big role on this as well. You can see Horvat makes a dangle through Burns there. Their energy bars are at the bottom. Burns is dead. He just gets burned to the outside, misses to the hit, and Horvat finds the back of the net. Hitting is more of an actual skill now, whereas before you could kind of just flick the stick around and get good clean hits. Now you actually have to time it or you're going to get burned. Hitting people over the bench and breaking the glass have both been added to the game. I will say it was super rare. I played four or five games and I only saw one guy go over the the boards never once did i see the broken glass so it's in the game but doesn't happen too often Total control skill moves introduces new a whole new control, Total control? that makes highlight reel moves more intuitive and accessible it looks kind of smooth kind of flows moves give you more options but timing to play right and reading the ice will be the difference between success and failure however if you prefer legacy controls oh, you still have that option plus a new ability to fake Pass or deke out of every move. Go, Johnny. Also adds a dynamic Ew. new offensive layer to like the no game. room there. Total control skill moves are definitely going to be one of the more controversial added features. It's essentially just a controller option that maps some of the more difficult dekes like a between the legs or the Michigan to literal buttons on your controller. With these new controls, the Y button is the Michigan. So you literally just go behind the net, hold Y for a certain amount of time, let go, and the Michigan is done. I found this to be a little disappointing. Deeks should be something that you go into practice mode and grind away at until you get perfect. To make it so you can just go behind the net and tap the Y button, for the Michigan just just feels too easy. I know a lot of people struggle to do the Michigan. Maybe a lot of people never even pulled it off. But there's something special about actually having to put in the work and that is now gone. Now obviously you still need the right placement and you need to time the deeks correctly. So you have to hold Y for a certain amount of time for it to work. If you hold it too long, it won't. If you hold it too little, it won't. But it just doesn't feel right to me. I'm not the biggest fan of this change right now, but I got to give it some more time and we'll see what happens. Tick, tack, toe. Vision passing puts tape to tape play with your teammates Here we go with the at vision your passing system. This is actually quicker, huge. passes to keep puck possession and mount that all important pressure. By mapping the controller's face buttons to your teammates, vision passing the doesn't just allow more clean. efficient passing, but opens up that's different a new, opportunities. That's a like new pass. A pass. I have not seen that. To set up the perfect play. This Little also no looker? stretch and breakaway passes, giving you new ways to attack the net. But hitting the correct button alone won't guarantee a perfect pass. Gameplay components so and player attributes all factor into a successful play. This feature here seems so minor, but it has been needed for so long. I mean, it literally happens every single game where you have a guy like cutting up the ice on a nice breakout and it ends up going to the wrong guy or just going down the ice for an icing. So now we have this vision passing. If you don't like it, you can still pass the normal way by just clicking in the right trigger. But if you want to try this new system, you will hold RT and that will bring up all the buttons above the players. This felt really good in game and was especially 
helpful when you're setting up on a power play where you're making some unique passes that you wouldn't normally have the chance to make. You can get a bit more creative with passes and find lanes that maybe normally you wouldn't be able to hit, but now that you can just hold RT and then specifically pick which player you want to pass to, it makes it a whole lot easier. As I mentioned before, my number one use for this was on the breakouts where you're finding that specific pass or trying to hit a certain guy. This system definitely helps out. Plus, we've added one touch passing, which lets you quickly move the puck around the ice by tapping and the pass button as the puck is in transit. So you can All also kind of preemptively so hit buttons to make that pass happen instantly the moment get it gets on your stick. On the ice. Nice. For our brick walls out there, an update to our human goalie controls human goal makes playing not goal for me, more but accessible we'll watch it and out. intuitive. Historically, the game's controls made it easy to lose the net, creating frustrating empty net goals and a steep learning curve. So in NHL 24, we have added a new tethered control system. As you slide back and forth to make saves, you simply okay. release the left analog stick and your goalie will Honestly, auto return back to a centered position. I don't quite position. understand what the difference is there. I did not have the chance to mess around with human goalie at all, but from what I see there, it looks like they're kind of keeping you in the center of the net by default. So it's going to be way easier for the casual user just to pick up the game and hop into the net. You don't really have to do much. You're just using your analog stick going back and forth, and then it re-centers you as you go. System. This allows you to guess the location of the shot for a bonus on your save attempt. Guess okay. Wrong increases the chance of a so you got to kind of read the shooters. It's a nice addition for our veteran goalies and really breathes new life into the position. From high pressure plays that'll leave you sweating to sending your friends into the bench, NHL 24 steps the game up to give you those authentic hockey feelings. So there Thank we you have for it. watching and catch you on the ice. NHL 24 official reveal trailer. That is it. Obviously, you heard my thoughts and my personal experience on the gameplay as the trailer went on, but let's just sum this all up. First, we have to give credit where credit is due. EA actually just dropped a five-minute pure gameplay trailer. There's no rollerblading around the city. There's no gimmicks. There's no hype. It's literally just the gameplay. I think that alongside the clean and simple Kale McCarr cover at least show that EA are kind of going back to their roots a little bit here in NHL 24. The most encouraging thing I can say from all of this is when I picked Picked up the controller and played NHL 24 for the first time, it felt like a different game. We were there in Vancouver with some of the best NHL gamers in the world, and they picked up the game and just were lost when it comes to these new features. And that's how it should be. It should feel different each and every year. So for good or for bad, that remains to be seen, but the game does feel and play different. I would love to hear your guys' honest thoughts in the comment section down below. I tried to be as honest with you as I could. I know there's some features in here that people will absolutely love and others that people will absolutely hate. I just want this game to be the best that it can be. And at the very least, I'm hopeful for NHL 24. This was a promising trailer. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Hit the like button if you found this helpful in any way. And of course, hit subscribe. We're on the road to 1 milli. And we're going to be getting you all the NHL 24 news as it drops. That's it for me. I'll see you guys next time. And peace.